All right. Um, welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming to the SOC Europe briefing. Uh, this is the briefing for this semester. Um, so you'll note at the top of the slide deck, uh, you can actually follow along um, on uh, this uh, by going to this URL at the top. The video uh, will be made available later on. So obviously, we're not recording it. Uh, we're recording it to Zoom, but uh, later we'll download it and put it onto YouTube. So if you have friends that are not able to attend um, because of conflicts with midterms, projects, or other things, um, do ask them to uh, review the recording that will be available later. So the slides are already available, so you're welcome to jump on, on the slide deck by just typing in bit.ly uh, soc-europe-2110. 21 is uh, the year and 10 is the semester, so 10 means uh, SEM1. Okay, um, so what we're going to do today is spend about 30 minutes, even though it's uh, for an entire hour uh, that we have budgeted uh, to go through uh, the Europe procedure, okay? Okay, hey, and I'm assisted by Ms. Ivy Ung. She is here on this call too. So if you have questions about Europe, uh, you can ask them in the question chat and uh, either of us will try to answer them. Um, I uh, definitely want to hear from you about your interests. Okay. Um, the objectives of Europe are really simple. It's basically because we have faculty here that are uh, uh, doing cutting edge research in many different areas of IS and CS uh, that we want uh, undergraduates to also have a chance to participate in that active uh, idea of research. Research is very different from coursework. And so it's actually very important uh, that uh, we have students participate in this, especially since uh, having long-term uh, research and um, less well-structured modules is a very important part of transitioning to the workplace environment. And uh, for those of you interested in doing graduate education, um, that's also a very important aspect of it is to have some undergraduate research experience. Now, typically uh, research does involve a number of different things. Uh, it involves uh, a multi-pronged process uh, that comes over several semesters worth of work. Um, but uh, here we only have two semesters to do it. Uh, you'll start with problem formulation, so getting an idea of what the problem is to be solved. Uh, after you've identified a problem or in conjunction with that, typically you have to read lots of cutting edge papers and, and definitely uh, research in the area of computing is uh, changing every day. So a literature review is a, a very big part of that. Um, you can also attend research seminars that are hosted by the department. Um, they'll be announced on the website and uh, sometimes uh, through email lists uh, and your advisor uh, may uh, direct you to participate in these uh, research seminars. And these are actually a really good way of uh, cultivating knowledge in many areas of competing, not just the areas that you're intending to work on. Of course, after you've done all of this and you have a good idea about what's being done, and this usually comes in the first semester, you'll start uh, at towards the end of this first semester uh, to propose and develop your own solution to the problem. Uh, might be theoretical in terms of a proof, it might be empirical in terms of implementing an algorithm and testing it. And then finally, and most importantly actually, is the documentation and uh, presentations of results. Um, even if you do research, if you don't report it, it's like doing research in a forest uh, where nobody can hear trees dropping. So it's actually very important, especially for your grade, uh, to do a great job on your presentation because this is the best way that people know about your work. Okay, so actually communicating research is actually very difficult. And uh, the more you try uh, to do that, the better you'll get at that. Okay, so uh, what is Europe? Europe is actually a CP coded module. CP means it's uh, uh, specific to SOC, not specific to either the uh, DISA department or the DCS uh, Department of Computer Science. And usually CP modules are project related. So there are a number of different uh, project modules of uh, Europe or undergraduate research opportunities program is one. Typically it's done by students in their year two or year three. And um, basically the idea is to give you a year long experience for research. And the prerequisites are really, really simple. You have to uh, have done basically about a year and a half worth 
of normal course load, so 60 MCs, uh, that can be partially satisfied by advanced uh, standing or placement credits that if you come from poly or have some other type of um, advanced credit that coming into the course. We also want to make sure that this is an enrichment activity, meaning that it's something that we ask students to try if they're interested, but only if their foundations are pretty solid. This is why there is a minimum CAP requirement. That's really the only reason, okay? And uh, there's a minimal level of approval from uh, me as the Europe coordinator um, to check that uh, a super suitable supervisor has been uh, has agreed to help you along on your path. Okay, so um, as long as you meet the first two requirements, the approval process from the department is actually very straightforward. It's just to double check that all of the um, requirements are uh, done properly. Uh, where this sometimes comes a problem is when you've done a lot of SU. Okay, so if you've done a lot of SU in your first semester and you've sort of artificially inflated your CAP, uh, especially for foundation modules, uh, you may be called uh, on, or your supervisor, your uh, intended supervisor may be called on to, to double check whether that's okay with them. Okay, so timelines, okay, all of the things in the orange highlights, these are slides in this deck that are different from previous versions. So um, these are the slides that you need to note for changes for this semester. So um, obviously this slide changes every semester because the dates uh, are a bit different. So basically because uh, Europe is a two semester long contiguous uh, module, so you can't take C SAP, uh, sorry, SEP or NOC or other uh, leave of absence in the middle. And then uh, you have two semesters back to back. For this briefing, we're uh, considering you as uh, possibly starting in SEM2, uh, of this year, so uh, around January of this coming year. And that means uh, you'll have the following deadlines, okay? So the first deadline is um, that you would have to um, work on the continuous assessment or uh, report. And this is an interim report due around week 12. Um, and then after that, uh, we need to help you arrange a presentation with the main evaluator. Uh, optionally, your supervisor can be there, and that would uh, take place during reading week. So um, that's around, I think, uh, late April, uh, early April next year, okay? Um, then this will be done uh, for the first semester. Then the second semester, there will be a final assessment, um, and that will happen again in week 12 of um, AY uh, 2223. Okay, first SEM, so uh, about the November of next year, and the presentation will be done again at the same time at reading week. So you need to arrange again with your supervisor and main evaluator to have it examined, and then you have uh, a bit of time to fix up your uh, thesis, uh, your Europe thesis, and then deliver that as a, a final report that's to be deposited in the NUS uh, digital library. Okay, and then you'll have to also give the feedback about how your supervision went so that we know how to improve this process. Okay. So let's go on to the next slide. Um, how evaluation works is very simple. Basically, there is a split right down the middle. Um, we have a supervisor and a main evaluator. Your supervisor is responsible for 50% of the grade in total and same with your main evaluator. And half, about 30% of the grade comes from the first semester and the final uh, semester where you do the bulk of your work will be um, the second part, okay, so worth 70%. Okay, um, Rishab asks a question. Uh, what about submitting your work to a conference or journal? Um, do you need to get uh, NUS approval? And the answer is generally no, you don't need to do that. Uh, you can go ahead and, and work with your advisor and they will advise you um, where to submit and, and when to do it. So that is definitely encouraged if you have good results there. Okay. Um, so for assessments, you know, uh, basically in the two semesters, the milestones are similar, but uh, slightly different to um, reflect the formative nature of the first semester and the summative 
nature of the second, okay? By that, we mean that at the uh, interim report, we hope that you have done work to better understand the problem and uh, have a good idea of the literature involved. So that means the understanding of the problem, the technical achievement that may be part of that, okay? Um, but uh, we don't expect you to have a very uh, forthcoming results already on the extension of knowledge or, or the actual uh, methodology, okay? So that will come later in the final report, okay? So that's uh, the important part of the, the evaluation. So you can discuss this with your supervisor um, on uh, what to do. The important thing is to make sure you, you put the, the deadlines that uh, you saw on the previous slide on, the, on your calendar, because uh, I think a lot of people forget when things are due, okay? So uh, again, reading week and week 12 is when you need to start getting things ready, okay? And uh, to proceed to the second semester, it's very simple. Uh, usually this is never a problem uh, for, I think at least 99% of the Europe's that we have, that the supervisor and main evaluator after seeing your progress in the first semester, just have to say, uh, yeah, the student is working towards their goal. We let them continue uh, for the next semester. So uh, you get uh, finally one single grade for your up for both semesters. Uh, for the first semester, you'll receive an in progress or IP grade for that semester that will be changed to your letter grade uh, at the end of the second semester of work. Okay, so um, your up applications formally open next week, uh, but if you would like and you've already started the application process, you can go ahead and do that. Um, you just need to uh, use this link here. Okay, I'm going to uh, copy the link and just paste it into uh, Zoom chat so that you can also have it there. Let's see, where is it? Uh, okay, so in Zoom chat, you can um, click that link. You can take a look at what it entails. Uh, you may need to be logged into NUS to do that. Uh, but um, once you submit the application, uh, then you're good to go. So let's uh, review that application for a second here. Yeah, I hope I'm logged into NUS so I can show you this. Yeah, so um, you'll need to fill out this semester uh, as the current term uh, uh, that's right now. So uh, right now it is uh, term 2110. And uh, you're planning to start, I think that there is a, a, a okay, well, um, this is the current term. Uh, there might be a question in your version of the form later, which may ask, when do you intend to start uh, your program? And that would be term uh, 2120, okay, because you're starting in the second semester, okay? So you could fill out something like this, term 2110, starting term uh, 2120, okay? You write your a, a name, student number, contact number, program, year of study. Uh, if you're a, a USP student, this counts towards your independent study modules, uh, ISMs. So uh, please make sure you, you write that in. Uh, and then we want some background information from you. So if you've done past independent research or uh, independent study in your JC or um, your, um, your polys, then you can write that down here. Uh, if you've won any award and prizes, that's if they're pertinent, please put them now. Okay, um, we'll check on these two other things, uh, the number of enrolled uh, modules that you have passed and are currently enrolled in your CAP, you put that there and you should get a unofficial transcript uh, and, and uh, place it in there, okay? I'm not gonna go to the second page, but the second page also has a, part for you to upload a screenshot of an email from your um, uh, supervisor, your intended supervisor. So this is a form that puts both of the forms together. Uh, basically, you need to um, secure a project with a supervisor and uh, they have to give you permission to enroll. Uh, you just take a screenshot of that and uh, include it in your form submission. Okay, so there's another page here that has that information on it. Okay. So I will go back to the deck. So um, 
It's a very fast application process, usually because uh, it's automated. So uh, I'll get an email ping after you submit the form. If everything looks OK, then it'll be approved whenever I get to see and process the email. Otherwise, sometimes I have to check with the intended supervisor whether there are certain um, special circumstances that are OK with them. Uh, then you will be informed by email if your application is approved. Okay. We hope that uh, all of you finish your Europe applications if you're intending to start next semester by November 12th, okay? Uh, because uh, we want uh, you to have a sufficient time uh, to do your work, okay? Uh, if you start too late, meaning too close to the start of the second semester, um, uh, it may be, a, um, you know, you may have less time. Because uh, Europe is a full year program, we expect you to do uh, work on Europe during the semester breaks. That means including your summer break, your longer three month break, and uh, also your one month break in November. Okay, this is why the deadline uh, is a bit earlier. Okay, so um, that's why it says uh, November 12th. Okay, but it is actually a rolling admissions. Uh, so as and when you apply, even if it's uh, after November 12th, Go ahead and apply anyways. And uh, if your supervisor approves and uh, we see that there's no problem, we'll go ahead and let you take your up as long as uh, yeah, the semester hasn't started. Okay, now how do you find projects? Well, SOC is a big school. There are many of you and there are many profs. So it's a little bit difficult to find things. Okay, now um, there is this site called Project Admin or Project Administration. And uh, you'll see a different version than what I see. Uh, but basically it'll look similar, all right? So when you log into the system, uh, you will see, uh, I think a bunch of uh, FYPs and uh, let's see, uh, back to name. Yeah, uh, so in Europe, you'll see a list uh, that looks a little bit like this. Okay, like what, what type of projects are available um, this coming, this semester, and maybe uh, what are ones coming up next semester. So this is the one for you guys uh, that you can consider. Yeah, um, and the, uh, a third one here, I think actually this is the one that's more uh, related because these are the newer projects. So you can uh, um, go into here and uh, filter by a particular keyword or filter by a department, okay? And uh, you can click on the project links uh, to get a description of what um, this particular project is. So this is a FinTech uh, project uh, proposed to look at um, robo-advising. And um, typically we give you a paragraph or two of information and some references that you can chase, okay? So the key part about looking for projects is you actually have to do a little bit of work on your own because Europe is a um, supplemental program. It's an enrichment program. It's not um, necessary for students to take. And as such, you know, uh, profs being either lazy or very busy or both, um, don't bother proposing a lot of Europe projects. What they have to do is propose FYP projects because they're mandatory for a certain section of our students. Okay, so for this reason, it's important to uh, look at both the Europe as well as the FYP portals. Both of those are relevant to you. Okay, so when you go to the project min system, make sure uh, you take a look at FYP proposals as well. So you can see here uh, for the Europe for this coming semester, we only have 22 projects. Okay, but um, and there are more than 22 of you, but uh, for FYP, there, there should be a lot more. So there are 56 projects uh, currently written uh, for FYP. Okay, and you'll see some of the same projects, but the important thing here is not to look at the exact project. Okay, if you find an exact project that matches you, great, then definitely uh, try to take that project. But if not, if you're in that general area, uh, and you think, okay, this, this project sounds interesting and other projects offered by the same supervisor uh, also sound interesting, uh, then maybe what you want to do is approach that supervisor and talk with them first and see whether there's a good project that might be a good fit for you, okay? So for example, Damif, uh, Pro, uh, Prof Damif does a lot of work on open source code. So if you wanted to contribute to open source and have more software engineering type projects, these would be uh, uh, cases of FIPs that he supervised. And there might be a Europe uh, version of these that you can do as well. 
okay? Um, uh, other people do other things like uh, Jin Song uh, does a lot of work on uh, uh, machine learning and uh, different uh, parts of AI, especially from an analytic approach. So there's uh, quite a lot of projects that he's uh, put up here um, that could be supervised by him or his team of uh, students and, and uh, postdocs. Okay, so the key part is uh, you use the project min system to start your search. Don't end there necessarily. Okay, um, I would advise going further than that and uh, also talking with any faculty whose areas of interest to you. So my approach would be to identify at least um, somewhere between two to five different uh, professors who might be doing research and things that you like. Okay, and then email them or uh, if you happen to be in school and on campus, and if they happen to be in school and on campus, you might knock on their door and ask them if they're uh, able to talk with you for a short while, okay? So I, I wanna emphasize it's really, really, really important to uh, take the initiative to find the best project, okay? Um, Europe is an 8MC module, so it's a fairly big chunk of your, uh, your transcript. So it would be very important to get a good fit Okay, if you choose a Europe supervisor that doesn't quite work the way uh, you want Europe to work, then it could be a very tough eight uh, MCs. Okay, on the other hand, if you choose a very good one, maybe that you'll be spurred to do an FYP also in the same area. Okay, so um, do the search, uh, spend at least a couple hours looking through the website, looking through uh, professors' web pages. Uh, and deciding which professors you want to talk to. Now, of course, professors are also quite busy. So uh, even if you write them an email, uh, they may not reply. Be a little bit persistent. Sometimes you may want to check with people in their labs, for example, a postdoc or a PhD student, if you write them and say, hi, I'm a, you know, a, an undergraduate at SOC. I, I'm thinking of joining your lab, but I know the professor is busy. I'm wondering whether I could talk to you a little bit about your project. And in fact, some of the projects that are listed, for example, Jin Song's projects that uh, I showed you just now, I think many of them uh, may not be uh, directly supervised by him, but may be supervised by some of his students. So uh, you can check through the uh, project description and sometimes um, they will tell you, you know, there's somebody else uh, who's helping the professor supervise that project. Okay. So bottom line, again, uh, you need to take the initiative to find the best project and mentor that suits your interest and advising style, okay? Now, you're also allowed to propose your own project. So there is a form. Um, it's maybe replaced by the time uh, we, we get further on this, but uh, right now it looks uh, a bit like this, very simple. You uh, take this form and uh, you fill it out yourself. You describe your project. And after negotiating with uh, your uh, advisor, the advisor will say, yes, I, I want to uh, advise this project. And uh, they will sign off on this form as well. So there's, a, I think, a, a part somewhere here, okay, maybe not, um, that will describe uh, what the project, uh, which supervisor is okay with advising this project. And you can turn this in uh, back to Ivy. Uh, at the undergraduate office uh, to get this approved, okay? So what will happen is if you propose your own project and the supervisor is okay with it, they will actually put this project into the project admin system and allocate it directly to you, okay? Now, how does that work? Um, many times in the project uh, admin site, there is um, people who will uh, specifically say open-ended project, okay? It's like uh, Jun Pil here is one person who said that. Um, there are a couple other ones, Rahul Jain, Shalinda, um, uh, Wee Kek, and uh, Wang Lin Soon. So these are all professors that have uh, already told um, you as a group that they're open to projects that are self-initiated by you. Okay, that doesn't mean that they're the only people who are interested in that. It's just that these professors have already opted to say, oh, yeah, please approach me. 
Okay, but if you have a specific area that you want to work in, and none of these professors happen to work in those areas, then after you've identified other projects that are similar in nature, you may want to approach those specific professors uh, to see whether they're interested in um, supporting your, your own research project. Okay. So uh, I've already stepped through some of the projects that are out there. So uh, you can see some of the ones here. So uh, Anan uh, does a lot of uh, game uh, development work. So these are more uh, projects aligned with research and game development. Um, you know, uh, Brian Hui uh, deals with AI, especially in deep learning. So if you are interested or specializing in machine learning, you might want to take a look at some of the projects that uh, he is uh, planning to supervise. Um, um, Chan Chi Yong uh, is one of our database professors. So there are a couple things on databases here. Um, uh, Chang Yi Chen is one of our security professors. So you can see that, that there are a couple of cybersecurity related uh, and adversarial machine related uh, projects. Okay, so um, please look through all of the different projects for FYP and you're up uh, to get an idea. Okay, now you may want be wondering what's really the difference between Europe and final year project. Okay, and they're actually very similar. In fact, we use the same project form to propose projects and we can doubly list them as Europe and FYP. Okay, but the key part is that Europe is really a research program. Okay, it's not meant for developmental projects like those that you would do for software engineering. Okay. Um, so your projects have to focus on research, okay? And even though you take it for only eight MCs, you're expected to work the entire year, okay? Meaning not just during the term time, but also during semester break, okay? So that doesn't mean that you cannot take a, a particular uh, project um, in Europe and not do internship. It's just that uh, we would expect you to continue to do part of your Europe while doing uh, your internship. Okay, I noticed that, um, yeah, there were some questions. I think um, Ivy answered some of these. Uh, so I'll just uh, briefly answer them as well. So uh, you, Richard Willey, you may want to scan all three periods. Um, you can uh, look at the ones that are for AY2223 SEM1, that is the date of the final presentation. So the, those, that is the list of projects that are um, already proposed and available, but it doesn't mean that uh, your supervisors will not admit a project that was listed in the previous semester. In fact, they usually are open to that. Okay, it's just that um, sometimes those projects don't get propagated along because they've been languishing. Okay, so you can um, use uh, FYP uh, Europe uh, from all three periods of time. Okay, the upcoming one, the ones that are in progress, and the ones that are almost finishing. All three of those lists are a good way to start the conversation with a potential supervisor. Okay, so I hope that answers your question um, in a bit more detail. Um, so FYP is the other program, right? So the FYP program is basically a program that includes uh, engineering as well as research, okay? Uh, so uh, for Europe, because it has the R, right? It's a research program. It means that you have to do something uh, research related, okay? And um, it's uh, obviously a higher MC module, uh, but you don't have to take it for the full year. It is just for the semesters um that's uh people take up fyp okay and uh like it says here uh, if you go into your fourth year at soc if you are in ceg and uh in soc uh, if you especially from cs if you aim for the honors highest distinction you must also do fyp okay uh, FYP and Europe uh, actually get a uh, amount of uh, money to support their projects. Many students don't leverage this and many su supervisors don't see this as necessary. Uh, likely uh, over the next couple of months, uh, the amount uh, will be revised. 
from $200 to $500. So um, it's not uh, money that you can use directly into your pocket, of course. But if you have uh, small expenses, like uh, you need to pay uh, people for their participation in an evaluation, similar to like what psychology experiments say, you know, you get $10 uh, fair, uh, fair price MTUC voucher or $10, bucks, uh, $10 Starbucks voucher, you can use the Europe budget, uh, FYP budget, to support uh, paying people to help you with that. Similarly, if you have a hardware expense, you need to buy Raspberry Pi, or um, a couple students are working with one professor using an Oculus Rift, then um, that professor can bundle all three of your, um, let's say two or three of the students to claim up to a thousand or a five hundred, a thousand five hundred dollars worth of funds from the school to do that. Okay, so the rules uh, are listed on the slide. There's only one per re reimbursement request per student, and uh, they have to go through your um, your supervisor to do that. Okay. Okay, so actually, that's materially all that I have to say about Europe. Um, there's a, a lot to say about what students have gotten out of it. So I'll just uh, read you a couple of the feedbacks from students that have seen it. Um, so basically, Europe helps you get an idea of how to uh, structure projects in the real world. When you, when you go out to work or when you go as a graduate student, basically nobody tells you when to do what. Okay, and they don't give you very clear milestones. This says they just improve this or go look at that. Okay, that's exactly what happens in a much more scaffolded, structured version in Europe. Okay, so um, you can use that to get good research and time management skills, but also many times you'll learn about specifics, right? So Nevin wrote that it taught him a lot about information theory and statistics because his project was related to that. Okay. Uh, for those of you interested in graduate school, maybe one of the objectives you want from a Europe plus FYP is uh, publication. So definitely something uh, is uh, one thing that our supervisors always look forward to is, is working with a student to achieve a, a publication work. Okay, and that means uh, being able to uh, figure out what is exactly your research problem that you're trying to work on and uh, formalizing that and then working towards experiments and proofs towards doing that. Uh, Fang Yuan writes that it's actually a very difficult at the beginning to figure out how to read and uh, scan the research literature. So being able to do that is uh, a very important skill that your supervisors may be helping you with. Okay, also being uh, directed and uh, helping you with the writing process is something that I think most students haven't experienced up, uh, up until now is writing a dissertation or a, a year long report. Okay, so um, actually that's a, a very good important practice, um, even for students not going into academia. Okay, some tips for students. Uh, then do take your up if you want to learn more about research or plan to do research in the future. Future, um, Kwan Yang says, uh, make sure you find a topic that you write. Zijin writes that uh, actually uh, having good time management and workload management is really, really important. I completely concur with that. Um, it typically is uh, very difficult for Europe students to manage having an independent study project uh, because there are so many other modules um, that have tests, midterms, and projects, especially during the second half of the semester, and uh, making sure you have steady progress from day one until uh, day end when you finish uh, is very important. Okay. Uh, Fang Yuan uh, cautions, you know, uh, be careful about proposing your own projects because then it becomes much more self-structured. Okay. So um, if you uh, want to do a self-structured project, maybe what you should do is talk with professors in aligned area and then help craft a, a project together rather than uh, proposing one that uh, specifically matches yours. Okay. So uh, some testimonials. So uh, Prof Trevor, uh, has been working in our school for a number of years. He's in our computer architectures uh, group. So um, he's very bullish on Europe students because uh, Europe students uh, generally are thought of as uh, peer researchers to PhD students. And while it may sound a little bit strange that uh, undergraduate students are considered at the same level as postdocs or 
uh, or postgraduates, actually, I find it very true um, that, you know, it really not doesn't depend on the amount of years that you've been doing research, but your your acumen for doing research. So definitely having um, a good collaboration and developing good research skills, uh, make it easy for you to um, do work alongside uh, people who do research full time, which are our PhD students. Okay, so uh, uh, Prof. Trevor said that he has built AI acceleration hardware and new AI algorithms to imp improve the speed and efficiency of uh, specific AI systems called spiking neural networks. So um, uh, they've uh, actually won a couple of awards for that and um, uh, gotten lots of citations. Okay, uh, Yi Ding is a, a, a student in my group. She's now doing FYP, but uh, earlier she was doing Europe. She writes that uh, she was uh, working on uh, not knowing anything about recommendation systems, but by the end of her uh, stay in my group, she had contributed to the state of the art for that. Um, so she learned also independent uh, research skills uh, during that. Uh, Fang Yuan uh, also wrote, uh, it was a difficult trial, um, but in the end, it was uh, something that paid off uh, very well. Um, he worked with uh, Wei Sang Wei. Uh, so Dr. Wei works on um, streaming and um, a lot of um, algorithms that scale. So um, he worked uh, to help uh, on scheduling and routing uh, for last mile delivery, uh, a very important area given COVID-19. Huang Yuan uh, also wrote, uh, he was working with even uh, uh, Stephen Frank, uh, who is one of our professors in the CS theory part. Okay, so he said it uh, allowed him to experience what research is like, and I encouraged him to think about uh, doing a PhD uh, at, during graduation. Okay, because now he's actually a, a PhD student. Uh, so he encourages all students to try it. Okay. Uh, Kwang uh, Min Huang, uh, he graduated many years ago. So uh, it says here, he won the Outstanding uh, Undergraduate Researcher Prize, which is a, a, a very small amount of students get this uh, every year, maybe one or two uh, undergraduates uh, per year in the past uh, in SOC. Now we have uh, quite a bit more, but uh, he was working with uh, Brian Lowe, who's one of our uh, AI professors, especially in Bayesian inference uh, on scaling up Gaussian processes. Okay, so um, he, I think, is in a startup or uh, Google or someplace uh, today. So there are some uh, quick issues. Uh, if you came late to the uh, briefing, just note that there is a, the slide deck is actually publicly available. You can just go there. So bit.ly a bit.ly uh, slash soc uh, dash europe dash 20 actually it should say 21 uh, 2110 okay so uh, you can look at uh, the slide deck there um, these are basically the same issues um, that you'll see this is just an faq so uh, you don't have to worry about them unless uh, these issues crop up for you Okay, so a uh, reminder, um, if you are interested in doing research, but you're not really sure, or you're planning to do SEP or NOC, then you may con uh, consider instead CP3106, which is an independent project. Okay, this is something like Europe, but it doesn't have an extra examiner and the grade is completely dictated just by your advisor. Okay, um, and uh, this will allow you to have a trial of doing research, but for one semester. Generally speaking, uh, most of our professors are not very keen to supervise students just for one semester because there's virtually no payoff. Okay, it's more like taking uh, a course uh, and studying something in depth, uh, but not contributing back by breaking new ground. So typically, um, you need at least a year, uh, and that's even quite a stretch sometimes uh, to, to accomplish original research in the area of computing. Okay, so uh, make sure uh, that you're clear about this uh, clause here. Students during Europe uh, have to do Europe over two semesters. So the same CP3106 uh, 
3209 will be registered for both semesters, okay? And that means you cannot go for NOC or SCP during um, the Europe time. Okay, so that is pretty much the end of my briefing. Uh, if you want more information, uh, you can go to the Europe Project website, uh, which has uh, more information and forms. I'll just show you that in a second here. Um, so um, it has all the details and uh, actually a more comprehensive FAQ than uh, there. And uh, later on, if you have friends uh, who missed the briefing, they can also find the slide deck uh, and the video recording. It'll be updated here uh, later on. Okay, so uh, I think that's the end of my uh, sharing. So now it's time for you. Uh, if there are questions that you'd like to ask, uh, especially in uh, chat, please do ask them. I can help you uh, navigate them uh, and answer any questions you have. So feel free to unmute uh, and ask a question or type your question in chat. I will stay until you're ready. Uh, hi, Prof. Uh, hi. Uh, Rish up here. Yes. Uh, I had a question uh, about like co-collaborations. Uh, I actually have two questions. So the first one being uh, some of these profs, they say that they also collaborate with like A star or something like that. So how mm -hmm. does that dynamic work? Uh, usually it means that your project is of interest to two different parties. And it depends on how the supervisor sets it up. Uh, it could mean that uh, you meet with both supervisors from both SOC as well as the other a co-supervising organization jointly every uh, you know particular time that they they happen to arrange meetings. It could also mean that you um, work with them uh, at different timings, uh, meaning that the professor at SLC will work with you one week, and then uh, you might uh, link up and, and sync up with your uh, co-supervisor and the other organization another week. Okay, it really depends. So the best way to do this is to clarify by asking the professor. You know, I noticed that. Uh, this is a collaborative project. Can you let me know about how the collaboration might work? Uh, all right, thank you. Uh, so my second question was, uh, if we're looking at like very, very niche areas of research and uh, not a lot of profs kind of, you know, do that kind of thing at NUS, uh, or, you know, they're, they're mainly preferring to work with postdocs or PhDs, is it possible to get an external advisor, non-NUS, like has nothing to do with uh, NUS, but is an academic? Um, no, that doesn't work because uh, we need to have an NUS professor sign off on that. Yeah, you might want to try to take an open-ended research project and uh, check with the professor whether they're okay with you collaborating with an outside professor, and then uh, they, they can just make sure that all the deliverables that are necessary for SOC are, are checked off. So yeah. the NUS prof, they're, they're mainly kind of like the proxy for the admin work only, right? But the main kind of uh, I guess, uh, collaboration or like the discussions happen with the external uh, advisor. Yes, that's right. So that's not encouraged, but it is possible to do. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Okay, especially if you're not sure about what type of um, professors uh, you might want to work with, uh, you can ask. Uh, I can help guide guide your selection a little bit. Typically, when we have this in, in a physical venue, I go around the room and ask, what's your interest? Um, and then uh, we can uh, discuss a little bit about each uh, area of research. One place to go and look um, is actually, let me share my screen again. Okay, is to our website. And uh, while the website's not usually good for much at all, but there is one part that is actually fairly useful, which is to look at the research area. So um, it's nicely broken down into both CS and DISA. So if you go to information systems, you can see six research areas. So maybe I'm interested in FinTech, um, then uh, you can see some of the people that are associated with this. So if you're interested in FinTech, I would look at all of these people and you can visit their, uh, their um, their individual website, these are sort of like the, the generic websites that are uh, for each person in the faculty. So you would visit their, their homepage and learn a little bit more about what they're doing. Okay. Um, uh, and so uh, that would help you a bit. Okay. Uh, within uh, the Department of Computer Science, again, there are lots of different areas. Um, 
oops, I cl clicked the wrong one, research areas in computer science. So yeah, algorithms and theory, AI, computational biology, databases, media, uh, programming languages and software engineering, uh, security and systems and networking. Okay, so um, this is a first stop that you would go. So if you're like interested in media, then you can click on this, uh, look at the people here, then you'll see the list of professors who happen to be working in media, okay? So some of us are cross-listed, like I think uh, uh, Lim, uh, uh, Lee Gimhee is also cross-listed in the AI faculty because a lot of us who do a media processing also happen to work with algorithms from machine learning and AI, okay? Uh, so I'll take more questions from you. Okay, uh, Long uh, asks, how do you explain, can you explain how do I extend a Europe into FYP if I'm starting a Europe in uh, year three SEM2? And then uh, there are a couple other questions. So thank you for asking them, Yi Yang and Selin. I'll get back to those in a minute. Okay, so um, uh, to Nok Nyong, um, basically, if you want to extend the Europe into FYP, um, that's easy to do. After you finish your Europe, you start FYP. If it happens that you are in this particular case where you're planning to graduate in year four uh, without an extension, then uh, you will only be able to do Europe for one semester. So that means uh, you should consider um, doing this uh, version, okay, the CP. 3106, okay? This is a single semester research, and then you can explain to the professor, uh, I'm actually interested in a one and a half year research project, but because I'm already second sem uh, starting, uh, I, I can't do a full year up. So I, I'd actually like to register for CP3106 for one semester. And if things go well, uh, I plan to continue to do this type of research in FYP. So I hope that answers your question. Okay, let me go back to Yi Yang's uh, question. Prof, can you explain more about the difference, uh, sorry, about the relationship between Europe and the Turing program? Um, so the Turing program is a uh, CS specific special program that's by invitation only. And uh, Europe is a component in the uh, Turing program. So uh, in the Turing program, you must uh, do Europe. Okay, um, so that's why. And the reason why um, it can replace the software engineering project uh, in CS is because there's actually not enough space in the program to do both. So uh, often what happens is your Europe uh, uh, supervisor will also have to talk to the Turing program supervisor and say, hey, look, uh, even though this is a research program, um, this particular student's uh, Europe also um, can uh, really sub for a software engineering project because it's got, uh, you know, some software uh, deliverables as well, okay? That's not necessary, but um, that tends to be what happens in, in this case. So I, I hope that answers your question. Yi Yang, if not, please ask it again, okay? And uh, Celine asks uh, a question as well. Uh, Celine asks, uh, if I don't meet the 60 MC requirement right now, but will exceed this requirement next semester, can you still apply? Uh, and the answer is uh, we need you to have uh, 60 MCs of uh, credits done by the time uh, you completed the uh, in progress by the time you apply. So that is okay. So you can be in um, uh, finishing your 60 MCs, but only by uh, end of November, uh, when you actually finish the modules, you have the 60, okay? Generally, when we find borderline cases, we like to ask you to wait a while uh, just because uh, having a strong CS foundation and making sure your coursework is absolutely not a, a problem at all is um, usually better, okay? So if you can't take it this semester, one thing that you can do is approach the professors early and saying, well, I'm thinking of doing a job. I don't quite make the, the criteria yet, uh, so what I want to do is get some ideas of like what, what textbooks or what papers or, or what things are interesting to read in this area so that when next semester I'm ready, uh, I can apply for your program and, um, you know, do better than other candidates that might be competing for the same program because I've actually done some self-study before. Okay. And uh, is second upper okay? 
so the minimum CAP is 3.8. So as long as you satisfy that, that's fine. So um, the reason why we, we say that there's a coursework requirement uh, in terms of CAP is not because we expect your, your coursework to be relevant to your year off. Okay, that's usually not the case. Uh, in fact, we find that research acumen and uh, doing well at the general modules is pretty complementary to each other. They, they slightly correlate, but they're not that strongly correlated. Okay, the reason why we have this minimum CAP is so that we can make sure you are not in any danger of doing badly because of your courses, okay, so that you have enough time to work on your project, right, if you don't have much time because you're worried about your CAP, then it's more likely that you're not going to do well in your project. Okay, so um, it, it's more of a function of that, uh, which is why we have the minimum CAP requirement. Okay. So I hope that answers your question. Great that I see it does. Um, so other questions from all of you. I'm very pleased to hear from you. If you have uh, even what you might think of as dumb questions, uh, or things that you're not sure about, please do ask because I, well, that's what I'm here for. I'm here to answer your questions. Okay, so if you don't have any other questions, uh, then I guess that's the end of the briefing. Um, if you do have other questions, just stay on the call and then you can just ask them one on one. I'm, I'm perfectly fine. I'll wait until everyone's left and then uh, I'll stop the call. So Yi Yang or Fang Zhou, do you have any other questions? I'm not really sure who that last person is. Uh, Zakai, do you have any questions? Okay, thanks so much, everyone. Take care.